Yo, what's up guys? So today we have a brand new update to Machine 3. This is version 3.4. And just taking a look at the release notes here, it says we got a modernized modulation editor rebuilt on a new technical foundation for a smoother and more visually clear workflow. Hallelujah. Finally, we have a modern modulation editor for editing our automations. I mean, it's been such a long time coming and it is finally here now. So basically this adds a new linear point workflow, which is the new default workflow for automation. We can do curve editing. You can now create smooth curved slopes in the modulation lane, hold alt plus mouse drag, which is option plus mouse drag for Mac OS, and you can curve your automations. This gives you visual feedback and the modulation editor they've created gives you a new visual design. I'm going to install it right now and we're gonna take a look. Okay, so I have machine 3.4 pulled up here and and I've loaded up an instance of Minimal Audio's current and using the MK3 I played in this chord, it just sounds like this. Just one chord. Now, how this works, at least how I found it to work, because really there's been no uh, notice on the website yet for native instruments on this update from what I can tell. And even in their support documentation, it's not updated yet, which, you know, if you go to the dot, 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 and you go to help online documentation, there's no update yet. And that's kind of the norm with native instruments. I don't know if they plan on updating it soon or how long they're going to take with it, but just fishing around with this, I was able to figure out that the new modulator, you have to basically go into this plus button, select modulator, right click it, and then go to your instrument. So I have current right here and I'm gonna go to page one and then you can see macro one is right here. And we got macro one and two on current's play page, which is what this is called. And I wanna automate both of these macros. So I'm gonna go back to the plus button, right click modulator two, go back to page one and select macro two. Okay, so now I can modulate these by actually drawing in vector points so I can Put the first one here at zero. And actually that's like a little above zero. So zero is down here. I'll just drag it a little bit and make the second point. And let's just bring it up to all the way up to one. And let's just see how this changes the sound. So it just shifts that sound a little bit. So maybe we want it to come back down and do this. But when it comes back down, maybe I want it to be curved in its automation form. So I'm gonna hold option and then I can curve this segment right here. And this is what it sounds like. So I'm going to do the same thing with macro two. I can double click to add a point and maybe I want to start up here instead and then bring it down to here. Let's see what that sounds like. You can bring it all the way down to the end over here. So it's gradual. around with this. And now that I look at it, it seems like it's shifting the values, both of macro one's values here. And if I go back in, I wonder if I can do the other two values as well. Yeah, so just be macro three and four, because each one of these orbs controls two sets of macros. We got one and two, and then three and four down at the bottom. So we got shift and thicken for macro one, and then wash and sweep for macro three and four. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit these, just kind of at random again, and See how it changes the sound. Now 
Now it's kind of finicky, as you see, I added another point here, but somehow it ended up pushing this other point to the left, which is not what I wanted. Um, yeah, it's kind of finicky, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna bring that one back, try to bring this one down. Let's just do some random crazy automations here. See, it's doing the same thing again. So I try to double click and then bring this one down, but it wants to bring that one down. So I, there's probably some bugs that they need to work out with this. Yeah, so let's just bring it below the zero value here and just at random curve some of these. Curving works pretty good. Okay, and then let's do macro four as well. So maybe start somewhere up top here. Let's just do one big sweep. that goes all the way to the end. All right, so these are totally arbitrary, but we got macro one, two, three, and four. And let's see what it sounds like. So kind of cool, kind of ethereal sounding, but yeah, totally arbitrary. The point is we have a new modulation editor inside of machine 3.4. Is it the best one? Definitely not. One of the best ones in my experience is Ableton Lives where you can actually drop in template shapes. So curves and triangles, sine wave shapes. I mean, you really can drop in stuff and then scale those templated shapes in the automation editor inside of Ableton Live 12. I think that I believe that started back at Ableton Live 11 that they had those template shapes and just like super easy to curve the automations inside Ableton Live. Now, this is a step forward for machine, but I will say it is kind of finicky and like I don't know if there's a quick way to access parameters because if we go to the pages of parameters inside of machine here, you can see that we have macro one, macro two, macro three, and macro four already laid out, but it's not, it's not like you can right click it and then click show automation like you can in Ableton Live. Like you have to manually, from what I understand, go into the editor and then find which value you want to automate. Now I wanna test something else out because it said that you can automate things and it's gonna create a cleaner line for you. So let's just, automate one of these macros. I'm just going to delete macro four here and leave the other ones up here. But when I turn this knob inside the page display here, we should be able to automate it. And you just do that by hovering over here and you can change the automation as it plays back. So I'm going to do that and see if it really does create a clean line. It's kind of hard to get to, so try this again. Okay, so that is the automation that it recorded as I was pulling on. So you see how it like turns a little bit lighter there. As long as it's lit up like that, you can drag it as it's playing back and it's gonna record this automation data into this new modulation editor. Now, how clean the result is, is kind of, eh, it's, it's okay. I mean, you can tell it's not step editing like we normally have with the pencil tool here where it's just a bunch of jagged steps all over. It's a little bit more evened out across the line and you can still edit these points and all that. You can delete points if you want to. So if you wanted to click and drag these points and delete them, you can. And then holding option, you can curve this segment right here. So you can still record it in using your computer using this hover over feature with the display controls. Now I haven't figured out a way to automate with machine directly into. Maybe if I go to plug an instance over here and I got shift auto turned on, maybe I can just automate the parameters that way too. Let me try this out. Yeah, so you can definitely do that. So I basically just did shift auto on the machine 
plus, which I'm controlling machine 3.4 with, and then clicked on the plugin button and was able to automate the parameters directly from the controller. Now, I don't think it works from the MK3 yet. Let's test it though, let's see if it does. No, in fact, it's, it has this crazy like plugin splash page here that is definitely not current by minimal audio. And I'm not sure what's going on with that. Now, I don't think there's a way to change this or fix this by changing the MIDI settings or anything like that. So really, I'm not sure what's going on with the MK3 still and Machine 3.4. It's been a huge miss on their part to not have these new keyboards be closely integrated in controlling Machine in its third generation. It's just, it's a really disappointing aspect with Native Instruments new hardware. I mean, you can still control like the mod wheel, the keyboard, all the basic stuff. And then like, you know, shift play restarts it. You can play from where you're at in the middle. You can record in. I think you can even count in record. Yeah, you can do that. For some reason my stop button though is not working, which is weird. Yeah, so it's just kind of buggy. Like even the stop button's not working. I mean, you can still use the onboard scale and art features. And it's cool because when you record a chord into machine using these features, it bakes those in directly from the keyboard. So it's not really using software to do that. And all that stuff still works, but it's just not as closely integrated as I'd like it to be. I really think that Native Instruments need to step it up and make their newest hardware work better than their previous generation's hardware with machine. It's almost as if they took some user data and then decided really sweeping decisions on what these new keyboards were able to do. And they just decided it wasn't worth the investment to have it closely integrated with machine. And so they're playing catch up now, one step at a time, getting these new keyboards to actually work with machine, which is just disappointing overall. I'm really hoping that changes in the future, but right now with this new modulation editor, it's also a step forward. And as you can see online, people are talking about machine. Is it dead? You know, with these trickle updates, a lot of people think it's been dead already for a while. And, you know, it does come down to your own personal perspective and the facts as well. So I think, you know, Native Instruments, honestly, I can openly say they've missed the ball a lot over time. And it's because I don't think they have that many people actually working on the development side. It seems like their resources are stretched thin and so we are getting updates because the community says they want updates in machine but they're trickling out and they're not fast coming when they do come out they don't seem the most perfected but i think they're trying to get us these updates as fast as they can with the resources they have available to them personally i don't hold my breath when it comes to machine or any of their offerings because it just leads to frustration if I focus on what I wanted this to be instead of just accepting it for what it is and using other programs such as Ableton Live, Logic Pro, where I can do all the things that I want. It's just not using the machine workflow, which I love so much. So this modulation editor is a step forward and I hope they keep making big steps forward. Hopefully someday they can start making leaps. I'd love to be able to record audio directly into the arranger inside of a machine. It'd be one step closer to bringing machine into DAW territory. It is already pretty close and you can sample audio into machine, but it's just kind of finicky, right? It's been a dream of mine for so many years now to be able to create my drum parts, melodic parts, layers, bass, everything that goes into her production inside machine and then record audio and vocals directly to the timeline like we can with clips and MIDI data. Man, it would just be insane if we had basic audio recording where we could add plugins, vocal plugins to our audio tracks and editing functionality to cut, splice, join, fade, bringing machine to this utopia that I think many people, including myself, have dreamed of machine becoming with audio recording direct to timeline. Anyways, we have a new modulation editor and it's pretty decent. I mean, it's like I said, it's kind of finicky, but you can create your own custom shapes and you don't need to use a controller. You can edit it however you want. Anyways, guys, that's just a quick overview of this new modulation editor inside machine 3.4. Let me know what you think below in the comments and here's to rooting for machines long-term progress. All right, guys, peace.